Hi, good day, John, and how are you today? Very well, thank you, Jenny, from the other side of the world. Hi. Okay, well, I thought we'd start today with just a little explanation about when we started to do these spiritual connections with Jen and John. They actually go out on the first Monday of the month at 11 a.m. UK time on Spiritual Radiance Radio Station. And they can be found at uh, spiritualradianceradio.weebly.com. So they get the audio versions of these. And then we started to put these out onto our YouTube channels as well. And we'll put the, I'll put the descriptions in the YouTube box below. So everybody will be able to find both yourself uh, and me and the Spiritual Radiance Radio. Okay, so that was for the listeners because we had some lovely feedback uh, from the one this week, which was our session three. So that's really nice. And I'd like to thank all the listeners there. So today, this one is session five. Can you believe that already, John? How, how the time has just flown by? I really enjoy our talks, Jenny, because we sort of we got it covered from the female perspective and the male perspective, and and also we both have very powerful intuition, and we trust what comes through. So I have never got any preconceived ideas about what we're going to talk about, but perhaps you have this week, Jenny. Oh, that's lovely, John. Um, yeah, I don't really. Um, it, although it did come to mind. I've been thinking about healing a lot this week. And I'm talking about healing, healing in a general sense for not just my own personal healing, but healing that I've seen others going through. So my major healing, I mean, we, I believe we've been healing since the day we were born on, on some level. But my major healing came about from my disability that took me 13 years to heal from. And I was thinking about how very far that, have, that I've come since then and how much has happened. And it also got me thinking about all the people that I know and all my loved ones and friends and everybody and how very far they've come and how far you can actually move forward if you're willing to do the work in such a short space of time. I don't know how you've, you've found that. I've just was reflecting on that this week and thought, you know, it's, it's really good. It's really good. Healing's so powerful. It sure is, Jenny. We often hear, well, I know in Australia, we hear, hear it a lot, and that's mind, body, and soul, or mind, body, and spirit. But I really think that's a bit back to front because it should be spirit, mind and body. Because honestly, to my way of thinking anyhow, we can't get our mind right until we get our spirit right. And we can't get our body right until we get our mind right. So there's a kind of order to things. And I really believe it's, it starts with the spirit. If we get our spirit right, then... The, the flow on effect is we get our mind right and then we're able to get our body right. So, so when you talk of healing, I think, you know, that, that's the way it goes in my mind anyhow. Mm -hmm. I, I like that, John, and that, that's prompting me to maybe change some information on my side because I have it as mind, body, soul. I have the soul at the end, yeah, and not the beginning. And you're quite right. And that actually takes me right back into my childhood to always opening things upside down, always sort of seeming to come at things back to front. And actually that's because <laughs> we are soul first, aren't we? We are soul and spirit essence first. And so, and, and I was also thinking about that for birth as well. 
And I began to wonder if breech births are not actually the, the way that spirit ought to be born because you're going to land on your feet grounded. Whereas when you birth through the birth canal, the normal sort of physical way appears to be head first. So if you come out head first, in effect, you come out upside down and back to front. <laughs> so I have these like sort of <laughs> things and visions that go on. And I do remember, I know very little about like my childhood, my past, you know, my birth and things like that. But I remember a cousin saying to me, when I was born, I actually came out face up, not face down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that sort of tells you something as well. <laughs> guess i don't know what your thoughts are on that well you, there's there's a lot of been a lot of discussion and different theories around uh, around that you know at what point does spirit enter because i believe spirit is energy at what point is energy enter our body mm. you know is it at conception is it when when we're born do we sh share our mother's soul or spirit right through the journey and then when we're born when, when the cords cut i don't know i'm open to all the theories yeah mm. but one thing's for certain uh, spirit is energy and, and and you can't kill it when we die the spirit leaves us i don't know where it goes there's all sorts of theories about that too but i know that it can't die so you know i've got some pretty out there sort of theories around that myself and one which goes back to my younger days when i was smoking some drugs i must admit but it came to me that perhaps death was somehow fueling the sun because what, what fuels the sun you know there's all these questions so perhaps you know we, we go home because i see the sun as my source personally that's that's what I connect with, is the sun, uh, soul. You probably heard me mention it before. S O L. It's an ancient Roman word for the sun, mm -hmm. and I know the Egyptians they worship the sun as well. Ra, the sun god. And when you look at a lot of cultures around the planet, the the they're all sun worshippers originally. So there, there's something with that as well. Yeah, it's really interesting, Jenny. Yeah. Mm. That's fascinating. Would you like to share any more about to any kind of uh, like little theories that you've heard or have or beliefs? Or... Oh, yeah. Was, oh, yeah. Another thing that I have thought about a bit too was when we look at the history of the world, that was my worst subject at school, history. But it turned out to be something that I've really studied a lot of, especially religions and cultures. And through the, the Christian faith, of course, they sort of focus on good versus evil. But I've got a sort of different wacky idea, if you like, but I already believe there's just two types of spirit. I think one is earth-based spirit, which goes back 40, 60, 80,000 years. You wouldn't know how far with those original peoples with the with the aboriginals and and first nations type people all around the globe because they had a, a very common sort of spirituality and then the stone builders come along that's what i like to call whoever came here and i really do believe someone came here from out there somewhere and i, I call them the stone builders and when we go right back and we see the start of what we've been taught as civilization, but it might have been the start of our downfall, as it turns out, I'm not sure. But I call them the stone builders anyhow because, well, they built out of stone amazing places like the pyramids and in South America, similar type structures built out of stone. Then they started building the Romans especially stone roads and stone whatever mm -hmm. then castles and and you see and they had an invading type of spirit 
which we should see today with what's happening with Russia and and Ukraine. You know that that invading type spirit is still there, and of course, most countries in the world thank thank heavens have, have become democracies. But of course, you know we still got countries that have dictators and they have absolute power, and which is not a good thing. But we're not going to talk about politics. No, yeah. <laughs> no, not going there. Yeah, the, the stone builders is something that I thought about. You know. I might even write about it yet. Yeah, put mm. it into some sort of book form because I think things come to us for a reason when we're, when we're open to it. Once, once we start practising mindfulness, of course, or always, that's my pet, yeah. pet subject. We find that in all cultures as well, the practice of pausing our minds and connecting with that nothingness where everything is mm. because no matter what we're creating, it, it comes out of nothing. It's amazing. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. That mindfulness pause actually goes back to birth as well because in the birth canal, first of all, the head comes out and then there's a pause before the rest of the body comes out. I remember my firstborn, I was waiting about five minutes thinking, what's going on here? You know, is it coming out or not coming out? <laughs> <laughs> And again, is that like spirit thinking, hmm, you know, <laughs> what am I doing? Where am I going? <laughs> what have I signed myself up for? <laughs> the power of the pause. Yeah. Oh, it's so powerful. Yeah. I've seen so nah. many people transform yeah. their lives yeah. just with that, that simple practice of pausing and connecting, connecting with our source. Yeah. And, and honestly, when we do start developing a relationship with our source, whatever you want to call it or whatever you believe it is, doesn't really matter. Mm. The important thing is that we do form a relationship with our source. Yeah. It's, it's quite amazing. Mm. And, you know, Christians call it prayer. It's called different things, but it's all the same thing. I like to see it as setting our intention when we set our intention. And I really believe the universe or source reads our hearts, reads what's on our hearts. And, and when we do that, and as long as we're living with awareness, and, and awareness is another word for mindfulness, really, then, then we notice the little things that are meant to happen on, along our path, you know, little things, synchronicities, mm -hmm. things we once called coincidence, coincidences, mm -hmm. but... I don't believe they are, but as long as we're living with awareness so we don't miss those little things when we're out and about, you know, we might overhear a conversation, we, someone might suggest we go and talk to such and such or, or the phone might ring. Mm -hmm. All sorts of things can happen and, and they're meant to happen, and things that get us on our path or things that equally get us off our path as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I really believe we all have a, a purpose, a path, you know, and, and when you're, you're living it, you know you are mm -hmm. because, you know, everything's grand, really, and, and we, don't, we don't get put off by what's happening in the world because we learn to, you know, trust our intuition and we don't allow other people or events to affect our, our peace of mind. We're able to maintain that through it all. It's not easy sometimes, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, but that's the practice, very simple practice. Yeah, and the, the pause is something to practice as well, isn't it? To try and really take that pause for even if it's just three seconds, it takes away whatever the angst or whatever it was that, that was there. And of course, during all this mindfulness and this pause, if we can put laughter in there, that's even better. <laughs> because when you can laugh at a situation that absolutely dissipates it, 
completely it like puts a whole new perspective on it so laughter's are laughter's really healing as well yeah well that's what they say about laughter it's the best medicine mm -hmm. and it absolutely is yeah. and you know i often say that that happiness is a is a byproduct of a mindful practice because when we start practicing mindfulness uh, and, and we're curious and, and whatever else, yeah, happiness sort of follows us around, if you like, because you know, <laughs> happiness isn't always laughter. And it's, But if you've got peace of mind and you're in, in that peaceful state, in my view, that's, that's happiness. Yeah. 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 It's a beautiful thing. I've had quite a few happy moments this week as well where uh, I've been down to the, the beach, have quite a few walks and everything, and see all sorts of different things and find myself out on the end of the pier with light language coming out <laughs> as I'm stood there on the end of the pier. That's really lovely. And then just seeing everybody's beautiful smiles as they're out and about and people saying hello, walking around. It's just really, really lovely. And then some connections, I've made some extra connections in the last um, week or so, and some new clients come along. So that's really good. There are lots of good positive things in my life at the moment. And what are your, would you like to share some of yours at the moment? Because I know you've got a big thing on the horizon. Yeah, well, we've just had an offer on our house. We're selling up and moving further Excellent. north. And where we're moving to in Harvey Bay in Queensland, they, they have a pier as well, and it's one kilometre long wow. from the beach out, one kilometre. So I'm looking forward to walking that and walking it often because, you know, where I was raised in Adelaide, there was jetties all along the Adelaide coastline, and I used to love, you know, walking out along the jetty and fishing off the jetty, diving off the jetty if you were brave enough because <laughs> it was quite high, you know, when we were kids. Yeah, so, yeah, things are certainly happening for us here in Australia with, with a big move. And, uh, yeah, it's exciting times, actually. We're looking forward to living in a different state in a bit warmer climate, which yeah. is going to be better for our health. Mm -hmm. and, and I've almost made up my mind to, to do more sound healing. Because, ah. you know, we've, you've made healing a bit of a topic. And I really, because for quite a number of years now, I've been selling singing bowls. Mm. Singing bowls are a great aid to meditation. You know, we get, we get a brass or crystal singing bowl and just get it singing and you know, really allows us to focus and, and go to that, that place mm. that we love to go to. And, uh, yeah, so, and, and sound is the energy. And I know I've got a big bowl. I haven't got it right here now, but and you dong it rather than make it sing. And it vibrates, it's amazing. And sometimes when my wife's got a headache, she uses that. She puts her head over it and just allows the energy to go through. And it does something to our cells somehow mm -hmm. as well, whether it aligns them a bit better or something. It, but it's, there's certainly something in it. Yeah, yeah, it certainly does. And how coincidental and synchronistic, because you probably won't have even realised this, but uh, a couple of hours ago, I put a post out on my Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn, about sound healing. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Yeah. I knew you would. I knew you hadn't realised. <laughs> so here we go talking about healing. This is absolutely amazing. I used my hand pan, hand, hand pan drum, and it's just a little. I've been doing it all week actually, putting out all my services all week. And this morning, I've been putting out about energy healing all week. And this morning's is the sound healing, and it talks and it's exactly that. It does change. It does do some. The vibrations do something to you. It gives you that cellular healing, that healing at a cellular level. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> now there yeah. you go. We got laughter, <laughs> happiness, heal, everything, synchronicity, wow. everything all joined into one there, didn't we? 
Absolutely amazing. And, and, I, and I'm continuously, because I've been living a life of synchronicity for many, many years now, and, and uh, I encourage everybody to, to start connecting with their source, start to pause more. Yeah, and like you said, it only takes a few seconds. We just pause and connect, connect with where we are using our five senses, connecting with who we're with, with full presence and connecting with our source. It's such a deceptively simple practice, but wouldn't it be wonderful, or I'll say imagine, like John Lennon said, mm. imagine a world who was practicing mindfulness, you know, Absolutely. and adopting the, those powerful things of kindness and gratitude and, mm. and, and, and connection. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And I believe it. I believe we're far further forward in that than people realise. I think we are. There are so, so, so many people out there who are putting out the positives and sharing meditations and all sorts of things. I'm in one or two different groups where I do like regular meditations together and things. It's really, really good. And you can feel, I think that that's what it's been for me this week. I felt... Um, a real big uplift shift in the energies this week, a real positive uplifting shift. I mean, helped obviously by the fact that we've got a little bit of sunshine now. It's normally I'm talking to you in the dark. <laughs> so, and we have some um, we have some sunshine out there today. So, yeah, everything, anything and everything that's positive, it just helps to raise the vibrations across the whole planet and not just across the whole planet but across the whole universal multiverse you know everybody everywhere on every planet every being just loving living and being at peace and happy just it's amazing <laughs> i don't think there's any doubt jenny the world is waking up mm -hmm. it, it can't happen quick enough as far as i'm concerned True. and there's a lot of awful things happening in the world as well but we can't let that affect us. And the, the more we help others to wake up or, you know, show other people the way, uh, you, you can't sort of help anyone that doesn't ask for it. But we can start giving different perspectives to people, you know, because one thing, as you know, because I, I train mentors, and one of the big no-nos is giving advice. We don't give advice ever because that can backfire for, for one reason. Mm -hmm. But we do become masters of giving different perspective. Yeah. You know, have you considered? Have you considered this? You know, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Or using third-party type referrals. You know. Yeah. Oh well, I know yeah. such and such, and this is this is what they did. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's not really giving advice but it kind of is yeah but so we can do it that way yeah i like to say you know you could try this you could try this these are places that you might want to try but it's up to you yeah yeah oh that's exactly. brilliant ah well i've yeah. really enjoyed our um, session today john and i hope you have right. too <laughs> so I'd like to say thank you to all the listeners again and I'll say goodbye for now and I'll let uh, John do the lovely ending for us. Well, I always like to end by just reminding people of, of the very simple practice, be mindful, which is the instruction from our heart to our mind. And we use it, especially when we notice our mind being unhelpful or negative and minds love doing that, which is our ego, of course. Be mindful, we tell ourselves, then we pause and we connect. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. So let's get the world yeah. pausing and connecting. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Thank Jenny. you. Thank you.